This is 757 Saturday Sports Talk with Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young on ESPN Radio 94.1. Each and every week, our program is brought to you by Larry King Law. If you're injured in an accident, you know who to call at 757-I-N-J-U-R-E-D for Larry King. Go visit Larry King Law. Dot com For more, along with the coach, Ed Young, I am Matt Hatfield. Phone lines are always open for you to give us a holler. Anything you want to talk about in the world of sports, local sports, and sports all around the state, college, high school, you name it, is our specialty and our main theme. 757-687-9494 is that telephone number, area code 757-687-9494. But now it is time to play. We kind of spent, we did it once a month for the first three months of the show, but now we're going to try to reduce it every couple of weeks to give Ed some chances for wins because he's got to he's got to turn things around here and get a little upbeat because the basketball season is right around the corner we don't want him to be too grouchy because he gets he gets grouchy from time to time during hoop season only so, when we lose um, or we don't want you to be a grinch around only christmas. when the children don't play together now. by the way are you going to play one or two games before christmas december 21st is the first date i'm hoping for two but you know we, we're trying I've been negotiation talks with teams. Listen, any public or private school out there that wants to play Ed Young's Warriors, home or away, give them a call at 757-67. Oh, I can't give out your cell number. 757-687-9494 is our number. If you'd like to call in here and let me know. I've got a couple on the back burner. I'm going to have to see if I have to bring them to the front burner here pretty soon. I'm still waiting for some people to return calls. Oh, okay. I guess some people don't do oh, that. Oh, someone so. just called. There might be a coach ready to play you. He's like, I've been waiting to beat him. Which probably, one is probably it? That, probably that. a guy's got eight or nine state titles, right? Yeah. Could be Leon Goolsby, anybody. You never know. <laughs> no, I know it's probably is. Is the guy that won that one last year? Who beat you last year? Mr. Harris. Oh, he beat you at Scope. Yeah, that's from that Green Run. Years. Kenneth Harris. Yeah, he won a state who, title. Who right? knocked you? Well, you didn't get to. You just missed the regionals this past year. So at, at, I don't. Know what, I'm trying to think. Well, in the district, all your, to all your losses. No, you lost a couple games out of district this past year. North Stafford got you. Western Albemarle got you in the Virginia Preps Classic. Two two very good teams. Yeah. Yeah. You, you lost some out of district games. Yeah. We. Yeah. We. Um. You know, I've called um, <clears throat> Oakleaf Elementary. No, you can't. Southwestern stop Elementary. That. You I don't know out. why these people don't call back because they, as far as I've seen, they have no. I game will schedule. say this because people do hammer you about schedule, I, and you have played Devin Robinson, who's a pro in our Virginia Preps Classic, Christ Church, when NBA. People like to say that you you do play some. Matthews, they got you on that, but they went to the state championship game last year. I don't know what people are talking about. They won a state title. Yeah, they want to share it, exactly. So I don't know what people are talking about when they say that. That's not entirely true. And listen, if you're trying to get wins this year, I don't fault anybody because you got to get points to get in the stinking thing. It's a short season. Let's go to the phone and say hello to Corey in the Hampton. Corey, you're on ESPN Radio. How's your Saturday going? I'm doing good. Thanks, Pat. What's going on, Corey? Hey, I would just call it in reference to Daz Newsom out of North Carolina. I just want to know if you all think he will be a high draft pick this uh, coming up draft. Thank you, Corey, for the call. Appreciate it. I love Dazzling Daz, as our buddy Mike Smith says. What do you say, Dazzling Daz? I think he's terrific. I was heartbroken to see him have that drop late in the game last week. I don't think he's going to be a high draft choice, Corey, but I think it's going to work out for him because I can see Daz being one of those third, fourth, fifth round guys and having a, I'm not going to say he's Dante Hall, but having that type of career in the NFL where he's a return man, a specialty player, and thrive and flourish that way because I don't think he's consistent. Now he's one of the best receivers in the ACC. Don't get me wrong; I'm not you know killing him for the one drop. He and Diami Brown are as dynamic a duo as there is. But and this goes to someone asked me last week about Tavante Beckett. We had the show uh, from Marshall a couple weeks ago, who's uh, a conference USA defensive player. Dear Kennedy Beckett's undersized. When you get to the draft, you have to have prototypical size, prototypical speed. You have to have all these measurables and things that check off. I'd say the highest draft pick from here is going to be Jeremiah Owusu from Notre Dame out of Bethel High. People have him going in the top 20 of the draft. Patrick Jones from Grassfield High, the Pittsburgh defensive end, is a first-round projection. But that doesn't mean Beckett and Newsom Ed, can't make NFL rosters and have as productive careers in different roles in different ways. I think you hit right on ahead. I think Newsom, as you were going over your answer, I'm thinking best third round. Uh, probably a little bit later, but slot guy, right? Yeah, he's a slot guy. He's he's got to do it in the games. Which if Carolina keeps winning, he'll get that notoriety. He'll get seen. Um, if he plays well in one of those All Star games, for some reason, some people like to see that. And then here comes the combine. For some reason, you got to get all these crazy numbers. Being an old school coach, I just simply say this: Can you play the game? Which I think he can. 
By the way, the top two players in the ACC in punt return average, both from Virginia. Taylor Morin, Westfield High School with Wake Forest. Dazzlin' Daz Newsome, Hampton High's very own out of UNC. So there and you go. Everybody needs a kick returner, a they good do. kick returner. It's so valuable. So he's going to play in the NFL. And a perfect segue to buy or sell. And here is Dino Franza with the hard-hitting questions for us. Okay, buy or sell. Here we go with our first one. Clemson running back Travis Etienne needs just uh, 129 yards rushing today against Syracuse to eclipse the ACC's all-time record set by Ted Brown of NC State. It happened from 1975 to 78. Wow. Now the reigning two-time ACC Player of the Year had 17 carries for 149 yards two weeks ago against Miami, 11 rushes just 44 yards last week versus Virginia Tech. Does he get the milestone today, buy or sell? Ed, I'll let you go first. He's going to have more of a game that resembles what he did against Miami than last week's Laffer uh, blowout against Georgia Tech. The question is, they're playing Syracuse. Will he get enough touches? He better do it early if he's going to do it. You buy and he gets it, 129 or selling? Mm. I think he gets the 129 today. You're going to go I'm, buy. I'm buying. I'm going to go buy as well, but I don't think this is a definite. I, if they decide to throw the ball early, it could be dicey. He might not get enough touches. But I think they'll come out and run it on him, and he'll get that milestone. Okay, second one here, buy or sell. Will Liberty, presently 5-0 and this season and fresh off a 38-21 win at Syracuse last weekend, will Liberty finish with the most wins of any in-state football team for the calendar year of 20? 20. Uh, this is a great story. I think Liberty's on the verge of being ranked, but I'm going to say sell. I don't think they get there, Ed. Uh, they do play Virginia Tech coming up real soon. If you look at their schedule, they got these five wins, and I think they're going to win today against Southern Miss. Brett Favre is not at quarterback for Southern Miss, I did learn. Uh, they're at Virginia Tech the following week. Then they've got like Western Carolina. They're at NC State, who's ranked on the 21st of November. They'll beat UMass November 27th, and then they finish up at Coastal Carolina. But I think it's going to be Virginia Tech. I do think the Hokies, who are are currently sitting at three and one they've got a uh, wake today louisville liberty miami at pitt clemson uva i think virginia tech will edge them out and get the most so i'm going to sell it even though liberty has been a nice story yeah i i, I can listen to that schedule they got two losses for sure coming um I, i'm going to sell it also you're going to go sell okay what's the next one all right, another Virginia team, UVA. The Cavaliers currently 1-3 and three on the season. They're on a three-game losing skid. Will they go the entire month of October without a victory? Well, of course, the month is, is just about over. Uh, their next two foes, so they got a game today and a game next Saturday to round out the month. Their next two foes include Miami on the road today, at home against another top 25-ranked team, North Carolina, on Halloween. The Cavs have allowed 41 to Clemson, 40 to Wake Forest, 38 to NC State. What's wrong with that defense? Do you buy or sell UVA? Well, I'm glad you said, you know, because everybody's, you know, about the quarterback quandary there in the offense, but it's their defense has not been as great as we thought it would be, returning about eight or nine starters there. Noah Taylor, one of those key linchpins at linebacker, and they brought back a number of uh, valuable pieces from a team that got to the ACC championship game. Ed, I don't think they're going to get a win here. Uh, in October, I think I'm going to buy this, which is hard to believe for a team that was just in the ACC championship. I don't think they get a win in October. I'm buying that. They're definitely not beating Miami. Can they beat Carolina next week on Halloween? And they've had some success in years yes. past against them. I, I feel they can. So you're going to go. You're going to go sell. Go ahead. You uh, have to sell. I see Carolina tearing that dog on secondary up. They can't stop anybody. Go ahead, sell. I'm being pressured. Yes, you are. Sell. That's buying. what that's what people do when they want you to b sell something. They no, pressure you into selling. I'm not. I'm, I'm, You're buying. You're a yeah. phony. What's well, the they do pressure there? you into buying as well. Yes, too. I'm pressuring uh, as him we to saw what just happened there. I'm pressuring him into selling his house. Oh wait, you already did that. You sold the house. So, <laughs> all right, buy or sell. Wake Forest is one of three FBS teams not to throw an interception this season. Will they try today? Uh, will they? T well, <laughs> I don't think they're going to try. Oh, no, no. Will try. they? <laughs> will they today against Virginia? Tech. The Hokies have five INTs defensively in the four games this year. All right, Ed, so you're up first here. Wake is one of three FBS teams not to throw a pick. Are they going to be picked off today against Virginia Tech? They're getting picked off today. So you're buying that. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go out on a, on a wild hair here and say sell. I think they're going to keep the streak going, but they might have two lost fumbles, one of which could get run back for a touchdown. So I'm going to go. And here's the reason, only reason why I'm selling, guys, is because I don't know who's playing in Virginia Tech's secondary. Every week they got four or five guys out. Now, they've been doing a heck of a job to get through it, 
But I, if you if you pin me down and said who's getting the pick, I could not tell you which defensive back's getting the pick because I don't know who's playing. So I'm going to go sell, but I got the Hokies winning and covering easy. All right, little local flavor here. Grassfield grad Patrick Jones out of Chesapeake leads the ACC in sacks with seven for the Pitt Panthers. Uh, and didn't you both uh, sell back in August that he wouldn't? Uh, uh, I think we did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we did. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> it seems like eons ago. Yeah. Uh, Notre Dame uh, quarterback Ian Brooks, who is ninth in the ACC in passing efficiency, has only three touchdown passes on the year. Are you buying that Jones will have more sacks than uh, – Book has uh, TD passes. Uh, Brooks Ooh. Books has uh, TD book, passes book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the head-to-head matchup between Notre Dame and Pitt today. All right, Ed. Notre Dame's QB only got three TD passes. Mr. Book there. Jones has got uh, ACC best seven sacks. You want to go first? Let me go first on this one because I know where I'm going on this one. I, I know where you're going to go. I, I, By the way, I'm picking Pitt to knock yeah, off knew, the yeah. Irish today. You're doing that just to play with next me. Next week, you'll get a little... Ding-a-ling! When we get that upset, just like I had a couple weeks ago with that uh, upset of A and M over Florida, I think Pitt's going to do it today. It's going to be their defensive line against that offensive line of Notre Dame. It's going to be a smashing battle there. I don't know if the Irish can throw the ball down the field. They're going to have to today against a Pitt team who's very tough defensively, a little bit you know average at best running the ball. I'm going yes. Jones will have more sacks than Book has touchdown passes. I am buying. He gets two or three of them. So he gets two or three. I think Jones gets one sack today. And I think Book gets two touchdown passes. I'm selling. What a shock. You, the Notre Dame Irish fighting, fighting Irish homer that you are. All right. <laughs> yeah. But I do feel Pitt's going to get him. And it's in. It's do you pick. really? So you agree with me? Oh, boy, I better get off that upset pick, Dean. I'm, I'm selling that pick. No upset now. <laughs> selling it. He's, he likes it as well. All right. Our last one to buy or sell today. Three unranked teams knocked off ranked squads a week ago with Florida State holding off UNC. South Carolina beating Auburn and Kentucky. Throttling Tennessee 34-7. to What the heck happened there? Ooh. There are 11 matchups featuring unranked against ranked. Are you buying or selling that we'll have two unranked teams knock off ranked opponents today? All right, Dad, you looked at the unranked versus ranked matchups. Do you think we're going to have that? I'm trying to, but I can't see who's ranked because the paper I'm using doesn't have who oh, was ranked. Oh, boy, he needs the rank versus yeah, give me some. Give me those ranked games real You're quick. You're unbelievable. Is Michigan ranked? Michigan is ranked, yes, but they're playing a Minnesota team that's also ranked, so that doesn't count. That's ranked versus that's ranked. Ranked, ranked. It's got to be ranked Michigan versus ranked. So you that. got uh, Coastal Carolina, Georgia Southern. You got Clemson, Syracuse, Kansas State, Kansas. No. You no. got Ohio State, Nebraska. No. You got Marshall and FA. You go, you're going to go against our boy Beckett there, Tavante. No. Pitt, Notre Dame. You just said one's going to happen there. You think Wake can knock down Virginia Tech? No. Can Tennessee rebound from getting their brains beaten in by uh, Kentucky and go knock off Alabama? Yeah. Oh, that's happening. Not unless they bring back Peyton Manning or something. Uh, Indiana, Penn State. That, that's an interesting one. Keandre Lambert, by the way, of Maury High making his debut with Penn State today. That's interesting. Yeah, it's got some it's danger to Indiana. it. Yeah, and they're not bad. They're a sleeper team. Oh, Go man. ahead, buy. I'm talking them into buying, Dino. Buy it, buy it, come on. No, Penn State wins it. You got UVA at Miami. It's no. an unra- How about Texas State knocking off BYU? Very good chance of one and five beating five and zero oh on the road, right? No, not really. No, no, that's not happening. You don't like the Bobcats that's against the Cougars? BYU. So you're not you're selling this. You're not buying that. So there's nobody. I mean, you just said Pitt's going to beat Notre Dame. That that's would, the I. That's the only one I have a feeling towards, and it's my Fighting Irish. So you said two or more. I'm selling it. It's not going to happen today. You know what? I got. Uh, this is a bad move by me. The, I think there's only two that can happen, not three. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Indiana's going to knock off the, the Lions today just because you said you're saying you're not getting no ding, 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 ding next week. You sure? That. You uh, sure about that? I, I, if not them, somebody will. I'm not sure the other one is. But I'll go ahead just to be different from you, which is if you look at the picks lately, it's, that's a good strategy. I'll buy it, Dino. Ed's going to sell that. Well, there was only one game last night that was a ranked against unranked. So if you want to go by that model... Uh, Wisconsin throttled Illinois yeah. forty-five to seven. So I'm, I would have to say probably uh, less than two. Yeah, I think both of you are, are probably the, the wise money says that's that's the way to go with it. Um, this has been a crazy year in college football, and you've got more of the chalk. It looks like lining up today in college football, not as not like some of the crazy upsets we've had. I, it's probably looking like that. You made a good point, but I'll I'll stick with my buy, and Ed will sell. I've got some coins to buy with, so that's why I'll do it, and that's why we call it. Buy 
or sell here on 757 Saturday Sports Talk. When we come back, we'll talk with Brian Rezepa about his new book and everything going on with him right here on 757 Saturday Sports Talk. Hit us up on the Twitter feed, too, at 757 Sports Talk. It's ESPN Radio 94.1.